He's my loving friend. He's with me all time. He's my loving friend, my savior all the time. He's my loving friend. He's with me all time. He's my loving friend all the time. He's my loving friend. He's with me all the time. He's my loving friend. All the time. He's my loving friend. He's with me all the time. He's my loving friend. All the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Santo, I don't want noise. I don't want noise. It's clear now. Your voice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can now. Yeah. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Devil is a liar. He's a big liar in this program. And uh, finally, we are here. Thank you, Jesus. He's with me all day. He's with me all time. He's my loving friend, my savior all the time. You don't know this song, join me. He's with me all day. He's with me all time. He's my loving friend. My Savior all the time. He's with me all day. He's with me all day. He's with me all time. He's my loving friend. My Savior all the time. He's with me all day. He's with me. All time, my loving my loving friend. My savior, all the time. Who is your friend? Jesus is my friend. He's with me all the time. My savior, all the time. He's with, me. Oh, he's with me all time. He's my loving friend, my savior all the time. Indeed, he's my good friend. He's my loving friend all the time. Hallelujah. Oh, we are here once more. Today is the um, ninth day, if I'm not mistaken, of the May, June 2021. It is a place for us to live in the land of the and uh, we have to be joyful because it is only those that are alive can sing and smile and praise and worship God. And that is why we are praising and worshiping God this moment. Thank you, Jesus, for this moment. We are here again in your presence. Father, it's a great privilege for us to dwell in your presence right now. This is Holy Ghost School moment, Holy Ghost School training, um, end time class uh, program. And uh, once more, my name is Evangelist Grace Emmanuel. You can call me Sister Grace. You can call me Grace Emmanuel. And I have my two guests, um, uh, one of God in my uh, Evangelist Daka and Evangelist Dada. You can call us brother, you can call us sister, you can call us by our name, whatever that is suitable for you, you can call us. We appreciate that. So the glory of God is a great time. And and um, I want to ensure every one of us that are living in the land of the living today is a wonderful, great package. It's a good credit that God gives to you to live today. There are so many bad news everywhere, here and there, concerning the global crisis, the problem that the earth is, is facing right now. But um, we must thank God for him to choose us or to count us worthy to be living. So it is not by power, it is not by might, it is only by the grace and the love of God. God Almighty. So yeah, we thank you all our sojourners all over our places, um, people that are following on this end time uh, online program. And um, very soon the program will have shape. We are trying to work on our technical, uh, we are having some technical issues. And uh, yesterday we were supposed to have this program, but unfortunately the program, um, the, 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 there's an issue we are trying to sort out to become difficult. But uh, today we can sort it out. We give God all the glory. God is God that answers prayer indeed. He prayed and he sort it out. He showed us where the echo uh, background is coming from. Noises that is uh, echoing uh, from the background. Um, by the grace of God, God has sorted it out. And yeah, without wasting more time, we are here all again for this program. And the next week, by the grace of God, we will have a guest that will join us that will give us more light on this Holy Ghost School uh, program. So today, um, as I said, I will introduce the guests. They will greet us and they will tell us what God has for us for today. My name is Sister Grace, and I will start from um, Sister Ada, or Evangelist Ada, 
Um, what did you greet the audience and tell them what we have for today? Hello, Hello audience. You are welcome, welcome to the program. Today, today as, as we have started with the topic that says, a weeping God, that is the topic that we have started. But by the grace of God, we are going, going to know who and who are the God's last days. And and again, we are going to know whether indeed we are in the last day. And this, these two topics, we are going to walk through it to know whether we are in the last day. And know those that are called the last day armies of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, Amen. I come to you, Akachuku. What did you have for today? Greet the audience and tell them what we're expecting today. Okay, uh, good evening, everyone. Once again, I thank you for joining us in this wonderful program. And uh, we are so sorry for inefficiency in so many ways. And, uh, you know, the technical issues is a big problem to us, the big challenges. But uh, by the grace of God, we will overcome it soon. And the program will be more efficient and uh, more consistent. Uh, by the grace of God, we ended last time by discussing on, um, on the topic that said equipping the last, last day army. And uh, that, that week, we, we, we said that we are going to um, elaborate more on who is the Lord's day, who is the la uh, Lord last day army, who are they? How do we know them if we see them? How do we know these uh, this military men God is preparing to use in this last day? And then uh, we're going to look into uh, aspect of uh, aspect of the topic that says, are we in the last day? Are we actually in this last day? Is the day we are the last day, or are we approaching the last day? And again, we are going to be looking at uh, uh, things like um, um, how to how do how to equip the last day army. Why why do do we need Holy Ghost school to equip the last last day army? So we are going to be looking at all these three aspects of. Uh, the topic today. So I pray that the Lord will give us the, the, the grace to understand and that he will speak to us and through us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, the, you can share this program so that people can join online in this program. And uh, I want to assure you, if you are following all this program, I tell you that every need of the hour, whatever is the basic need you need in your life, God will give it to you. And also, I want to assure you as you follow this program, you will develop a powerful intimacy with your Father in heaven. Because Jesus prayed that prayer, our Lord, during the dying, were teaching the disciples how to pray. He First of all, he said, our Lord who art in heaven. So. Our Father lives in heaven, and He now says, "Hallowed be Thy name." He hallow His name. He worship Him. He recognize Him. He glorify Him. So we must know that our Father is in heaven, and this Holy Ghost School is a way to connect our Father in heaven. And if you watch the, the one of the prayer again, Jesus prays, "said Let Your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven." So the plan of God from the beginning is that He wants His kingdom to be on earth as it is in heaven. And how can kingdom of God from heaven migrate to this earth? It simply means through this Holy Ghost school, you can control heaven, you can control earth. You can control, you can connect to heaven, you can connect to earth. And as we are still on earth, waiting for their father Jesus to come and rapture us to heaven. So, but he wants us to still connect from earth to heaven. And that is why he asks his father that his kingdom will come on earth as is in heaven because he knows that is departing. He's going back to his father. But he knows that we will feel often. And that is why he said, I promise you people I will not keep you often. These are the reason, these are the basic need that Jesus kept for us. Knowing that we will feel his absence, he said and promised us, I will not keep you often. And that is why when he teach them the last prayer, he said, Father, let your kingdom come on earth as it's in heaven. So these are the promises give, knowing that he don't want to keep us often. Then he promised that the kingdom of God will be on earth as it's in heaven. And it is a plea that he pleaded his father that he should release his kingdom 
so that you'll be on earth, so that what is happening on earth will be happening in heaven. That is all about Holy Ghost school. And where he repeated it again is in the Garden of Eden. Because Jesus was born before Abraham, we know that, that Jesus is God, he's Christ himself, he's God himself. And Jesus was before Abraham. These are the kind of the, 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 the word they call, they tell Jesus that he's blaspheming. How can you, small child, that were born uh, through Mary and Joseph the carpenter, you come and tell us that you are before our father Abraham? That is part of the why the Jews uh, stone him. That is why the part of the Jews call him a Zobabeb. That is part of the why they call him uh, is blasphemer. But they never know that they are, they are, they are blaspheming and, and stoning on their God, the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So in the Genesis about the coming of, um, uh, of the Adam and Eve encounter, you remember that every cool of the day, the kingdom of God is coming on earth. That is where it started. And every cool of the day, God opened heaven and bring down his kingdom on earth in the garden so that Adam and Eve can witness how the, how the kingdom of God looks like so they can enjoy the kingdom of God on earth. So it started from the beginning. So it's not a new thing. That was why Jesus said, I know your problem. I know how to solve it. I have the expo. I have the tips. I will help you. I will first of all ask my father, that thing he did in Garden of Eden, where he's bringing kingdom of heaven on earth, I will want you to do it for these disciples so that your kingdom will take place on earth and they will feel you. They will connect with you. They will be hearing from you. They will be communicating with you. They will be hearing in your voice all the time, your spirit and your presence will dwell with them too far so that they can able to cope in the midst of the wicked one. That is the mystery. And that is why he gave them his word. I will not leave you often. Knowing indeed that former time he has bring down his kingdom on earth in the time of Garden of Eden. And this time Jesus is telling them, I will not leave you often again. I will bring the kingdom of God on earth. And what is that kingdom of earth? What, that, what is that kingdom of God on earth? That the will of God will dwell on earth, that the kingdom of God will dwell on earth. And where is it dwelling? In God's presence. And that is all about Holy Ghost School. You take your time to bring down the kingdom of God in your house. You take your time to bring down the glory of God in your life. You take your time to connect and communicate with God, especially in this global crisis. Churches have shut down. Worshippers' places, worshiping places, it has shut down. The Western world could not allow people to go to churches to worship anymore. This is no more the time to dance and dance and wear gorgeous clothes and dress cute and go to church and melement. That power has gone. We are talking at the time of everybody has to be me. Everybody has to connect to his father because God has brought the kingdom of God on earth again. And he brought it down through this Holy Ghost school. Without Holy Ghost school, you can't survive. Without connecting to his presence, where he will guide, where he will lead you, know what that Jesus said. That on the last day, I will send my spirit. It is for your own advantage that I go. Jesus knows why he says so. You guys are crying for my departure, but don't cry. It is for your own advantage. I need to go so that I will send the helper, the comforter, the revealer, the teacher, the one that will comfort and dwell with you. No wonder in the days of Moses, Holy Ghost school has started from ages, from the days of Adam, from the days of the Garden of Eden. And what did God tell God? What did God tell Moses? Make a tabernacle for me. Why? What is the reason? Why should I make a tabernacle? One single reason, that I may dwell among you. I want to dwell in your midst. What is the meaning? I want to connect to you. I want to talk to you. I want you to hear from me. I want you to hear from you. I want communion. I want union. I want unity. I want compassion. I want companion. And no wonder Jesus interpreted more in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 when he's talking about we are the wife of God and God is our husband. He said, wife, submit to your husband. And uh, sorry, wife, submit to your husband. And husband, love your wife. So in every Old Testament and New Testament, the mystery is joining, they are all the same, but God bringing it in different way for us to understand. God of the old, the God of the New Testament. Jesus of the old, before the Abraham. Jesus, even after Abraham, is the same. This is a race. And these are the work of God doing for his people to be steady. 
for the people not to lose the communion and the way he has, he has set up for his people. All these are made for man. All these are created for man. All these are opportunities that are given to us. These are the credit God has given to us. These are the opportunities we need to make use of. But Satan have deceived us. This present church have deceived us. The ministers and the religious leaders have deceived us. They don't want us to experience God's presence. They don't want to know who God is face to face, one on one. In the social work services, there is a criteria, there is a, a word that said one on one counseling. So that one-on-one -on -one counseling in social work services is what we call one-on-one -on -one counseling, one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. One-on-one -on -one counseling simply means when you call, talk to a client one-on-one, -on -one, nobody will be in the means. So you can able to interact and feel the pain of the person you're counseling, the client you're talking to in the social worker. In the God's kingdom, God is asking for that one-on-one -on -one again. That one-on-one -on -one is personal relationship Come to your father differently, personally. Release your heart. Lose your heart and cry to him and seek for his communication. Seek for his interaction. Seek for his vision. Seek for his words and he will stop to you. This is all about Holy Ghost School. So this program we are talking today means, uh, the topic say equipping God's army. Equipping God's army of the last days. And I want to bring it the way it was. Remember, we are treating brazen altar altar of the Lord. What happens in the altar? What is brazen altar? And for a long time, we've been treating on so many topics. Last time we finished on the uh, topic called exposing our nature. Now, this time we are treating the topic called equipping the saint for the last day's army. And this battle that we are equipping the Lord's army is the battle between truth and light. The battle between darkness and light. The battle between truth and falsehood. So these are the topics that we are treating very soon I will bring in my guests and they will tell us what they have for today. And I believe that God has loaded them already to bless us today. And the question we're going to treat today is that, what is this altar? We are talking about the altar is about Holy Ghost School. Personal relationship, creating a time, a moment, at least one to two hours every day so that you can go to your father where two of you can come in is a covenant because you can't break it one, no matter whatever busy, how busy you are, you must keep that covenant. You must go every day. No matter how weak you are, you go to your altar, lie down and say, Father, I'm here. The flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. You give your soul to your father to equip you, to prepare you, especially in this darkest period we are. So he now said, do we know that we're already in the, light, in the last days and the battle has started? The battle of the last day has started. And the battle between truth and error, the battle between falsehood and the original. So these are the things we are going to treat on this matter, on this topic. And we have already that, are we knowing that all the things that are happening, all the event that is taking place, especially this global crisis that is called coronavirus, COVID-19, is a handwritten in the world, is a message that God is passing to his people. God is speaking in an encounter. He speak, he's using the pandemic to speak to his people. Remember in Matthew 24, he said it, that one of the signs of the last days, this pandemic is, is flawed. One of them is famine. One of them is hunger, rumors of war. So these are the signs of the last day. So we have to be convinced, first of all, that we are in the last days. So if we are convinced that we are in the last days, what are we expecting? Now we are already in the battle. And what is the God is expecting from us? He's expecting for us to get ready to join the battle. So this program is a way to equip the saints, prepare them, allow them to enroll themselves into the school. And when you enroll yourself into the school, you'll join the armies of the Lord. And the Holy Spirit will begin to teach you what is truth or what is error. The Spirit of truth will reveal himself to you. I will come back. Let me give my guest time to speak on this um, what they have for us today. So I start with um, Evangelist Zada. Um, can you tell us what God is telling you about this equipping the Lord's Day's army? And according to the question, one of the questions says, um, who is the Lord's Day's army? So from there, we can go to the second question. So who is this Lord's Day's army? Okay, thank you. Because why this question is that there are so many believers, you know, so many believers that believe that they are the Lord's Day's army. So many pastors believe they are lost the army. So many religious leaders, they feel they are lost the army. 
And so many people outside there, they are doing one thing or the other, believe that the Lord say, I mean, but the scripture and what we are going to uh, um, explain right now, we credify who is this lost days armies. So you can go ahead. Okay. So we are going to look at uh, those that are called the last days army. Uh, from the beginning, let's say that we have explained uh, that before you become an army, or before you become one of the last days army, you must have passed through the training. Then you'll be qualified to be an army, whether physical army or spiritual army or armies of the Lord or our normal physical army. So from the beginning, we want to talk about who are those armies? Who are they? Who are they? Then before you become an army, you must enter into the school of the army. Here you receive the training before you be recruited and you'll be given an honor that you are now an army. This is our physical army. And here now we are talking about the spiritual armies of the Lord, the armies of the last day, mm -hmm. those that are prepared to face the battle of the last day, those that the Lord has equipped, those that the Lord has prepared, has trained to be his representative on earth, those that the Lord has prepared mm. to stand, to defend the truth, to stand for God, to mm. stand to challenge the falsehood, the error that is hovering in the whole earth. That are those that are called the armies of the Lord. And another person, another mm. people that we can qualify to be the armies of the Lord, you must be a person that has entered into the school, the Holy Ghost school. I said that mm. before you become the army, you must have entered into the school, and that school is where you'll be equipped, where you'll be trained to be the army. Mm. If you did not enter into the school, you mm. cannot qualify to be an army. So those that are the armies of the last days mm. are those that have entered into the school of the army, the school of the Holy Spirit, the spiritual school, the Holy Ghost school, where you'll be trained where the Lord will remove everything that is not of him in you. And now they possess his own character, his own way that you will use to fight the last day's battle. Then another people that are mm. qualified to be the armies of the Lord are those people that have built the brazen altar for the Lord. And we know that the brazen altar, as we normally say, as we discussed before, Raising altar is the presence of God. Mm -hmm. Those that have prepared, those that have made a place for God from their life, from their heart. Mm -hmm. Then before you talk about your presence mm -hmm. or your contact place. So those that, that have prepared the mm -hmm. raising altar are those that are ready, are those that are qualified to call the armies of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because that raising altar is where you will always go to receive instruction from the Lord, to receive direction, your daily life direction, and to receive the correction where you will be trained. That is the brazen altar. So those that mm -hmm. are called the armies of the Lord are those that have built the brazen altar or have made the brazen altar where they usually go, where they normally go every day to receive instruction of how to work in every daily activities of their life. They are the people that you can say that they are the armies of the Lord. Then another people that you can say that they are the armies of the Lord are those that have been recruited, as I said earlier, recruited into the school. I use the word recruited. Those that have been recruited into the school of the army. Recruiting means those that have accepted the training, that have accepted that they will be trained to be the army, that have accepted that they will walk with the Lord, those that are called by the Lord. If you are not called, you can be the army. When you are called and you have accepted the calling, you answer the call, you will now begin to enter into the training. So those that have been recruited, those that are called and they answer the call, and they go in for the training. You can say that they are also the, 
the armies of the Lord, the last days armies of the Lord. And another way you can also qualify those, mm -hmm. so you can identify those that are called the armies of the Lord, are those that are that have started practicing God's presence. Practicing, I call it practicing God's presence. Why is it called practicing God's presence? Those that have started practicing God's presence. Because there, yeah, when you enter into the school of the Holy Spirit, when you have built the altar of God, that brazen altar, when you go into that school, into the presence of God, you begin to practice what the teacher, which is the Holy Spirit, is giving you. The instruction that you are receiving, you will begin to practice it. That's why I say that those that have started practicing God's presence every day of their life, you go to receive instruction. You learn how to use that instruction. And you also, you learn how to practice it, whatever you have received, whatever you learn from the presence of God, you begin to practice it. And those things you can get, those instructions, those information is how to live a life of Christ, how to be the image of Christ. Mm. Not by the word of our mouth or saying that, yes, I am for Christ. But this time now is the time of a practical, practical Christianity. No longer mm -hmm. I'm a Christian by mouth or I'm a born again by the word of my mouth. No, it's a uh, practicing action because he said that action speaks louder than voice as they used to say. So when you go into that brazen altar, into that school, the Holy Ghost school, the training has started. You begin to receive mm -hmm. instruction how to live your life, how to be like that man that you are following, which is Christ. Our character will begin to change to be mm -hmm. like the man, the person that we are following. You are now practicing God's presence. Whatever he teaches you in his presence. Yeah, I have a question. Yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not cutting you. I have a question. I'm okay. not cutting you. I have a question. Question I have is about what you are saying because some people may be asking you. Some people may be saying, um, uh, um, I, I, I am, I've been going to God's presence and I pray three times in a day. I fast seven times in a week. You know, so I want to know: Is it this kind of practicing, praying, bombarding, or uh, speaking in tongues, fasting seven days uh, in a week? Uh, I want to know: Is it that kind of practicing God's presence you are speaking? Can you explain it better? Because some people may hear this message, or they will log in, they will be hearing what we are saying, they will feel, oh, indeed, I'm already um, practicing uh, God's presence because I can bind, I can lose, I can speak in tongues, um, I can even prophesy and at the same time um, I can I can fast for uh, uh, three days dry fasting uh, one or seven days a week fasting so can you explain this thing more because uh, everybody answering a Christian will tell you that they pray um, all time so can you explain this school this training very well because what you said is that those uh, that are being recruited those that are accepting the call of God and you say something those that are practicing God's presence of course people go to God's presence to pray and people fast. So Amen. can you tell us more? What is different between what you're saying and what Christians are doing this time? Thank you for the question. To elaborate it more, practicing God's presence is by receiving the instruction. And those instructions is to change our character. For example, if I have been living a lie the life, telling lies, still I am a Christian. Or am I involved in a fornication? Still a Christian. I will still go in to pray. I will go to God to pray. God forgive me. Pray. Tomorrow I will go and repeat the evil that I am doing. So practicing God's presence, there you will learn that Christ lived a holy life. He will, there he will remove that lying spirit in you that you have been using, that you have been practicing without you knowing how to stop it, because you cannot change your nature. Those inborn things in us, those nature that we come out with, our thing that we are born with. When you enter into Holy Ghost School, start practicing the God's presence. Those things that we are practicing without stopping it, 
still claiming to be Christians. As I said, maybe lying spirits, I will continue praying, fasting, making many things, miracles, but still I lie against people. I tell lies. My life is not holy. I am not practicing God's presence. Practicing it is in total. I want to, I want to, yes. I want to say something, ma'am. I, I, want, I, I want to come to the, I want to come to the man of God. I want to come to the man of God. Akachuku. You understand you see what you are speaking now as I ask this question. What do you have to throw on this matter? Okay, um, you know, uh, I, I would like to start with uh, telling a story of what happened in the life of Gideon when the Lord called him and asked him to choose an army in which he will use to fight the Midianites. If you watch in that story, you'll find out that Gideon called and many people came out to join his, uh, his recruitment. You know, just like he said, many are going into the presence of God. If you, if you begin to tell many, ah, this is uh, God preparing the last day and some people will tell you, I am the last day army. I am fasting, I am praying yep. so much, I always go in. So many of them came up. Many of them joined the recruit. But God looked at them and find out that these people are not qualified to be my army. You know, before you become an army, you have to seek that and understand something. And what is that that you need to understand? You need to understand that are we in a war or are we not in a war? Because the duty of an army is to fight a war. Without a war, there is no need yeah. for an army. So you need to seek that and yeah. understand, are we in a war or are we not in a war? Then if you get the understanding that we are in a war, then you will now say, do I want to fight this war? You know, if you join an army just to get a, a, a physical need, you're not going to make it in, in the military. But if you, you join an army because you know that we are in a war and I have a passion to protect my country, that is when you are going to succeed. Because at that particular moment, your whole sense is, is built on this and your whole system is thinking on how to manipulate and, and, and destroy the, 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 the enemies. How to overcome the enemy? Your whole system is trying to figure out a strategy. Now, if you want what happened in the in the in the case of Gideon and, and his men, he chooses many of them, and they all looked at them and said, "No, no, 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 no. There are too many, and most of them are not qualified to be my army." You know what? Take them to the river. Let me give them an exam. Now, if you watch what happened there, Bible recorded that immediately they got to the river. Those people that are disqualified left their ammunition, jumped into the water and begin to, you know, drink the water. So this is their motive. Their motive, they are after what they can gain from the military. You know, many people are praying, but why are you praying? It's a big question. Are you praying because of what you need? Are you praying because the mindset is telling you that the more I go to God, the more I get what I want? You know, sometimes, let me use myself as an example. Sometimes I find myself going into the presence of God because I have that, I, I knew that whenever I deviate from his presence, things become hard for me. Things become so difficult for me. Uh, I, I think in, in the sense that both financial needs become so hard for me. So in order to get some of my need, I need to be coming into his presence. That means God is now examining my motives. I'm not coming to his presence because I love him. I'm coming to his presence because I know by coming to his presence, I will get my need. So it's like a trade by battle game I'm trying to play with God. And that was why multitudes that followed him, you know, expecting him to do the same miracle that he did so that they can eat. These people were following God. But their inner motive is so that they will eat again. And when he turned to them and said, I'm not going to give you food again. You know what I'm going to give you? My flesh and my blood. Bible said all of them left, rebelling only the twelve. The twelve are the true army. They left. They left. Yeah. The twelve are the true armies. Why are they the true armies? Because they have come to seek the right thing, which is life. They have come to fight for life. They have come, you know, an army fight for life. An army fight to give life to people. An army fight so that others we have life. So this two of us come to fight for life. That is why Peter ended up by saying, we've come to know and understand that you have the word of eternal life. So the what they are after is that life and not necessarily what they can eat. So some of us are going to church, sleeping in the church, praying always, but our deep mercy 
is to satisfy our selfish gain, our selfish need. Mm. There is a need attached to this that is different from the will of God. We are not there to be fed or to fight the, the war. Like I said when I started, you know, before you join an army, you have to understand, are we in a war? So many Christians are Christians because they believe that going to God will help them to solve their needs. <laughs> Yeah. They are not becoming a Christian because they understand that we are in a war. That the walls of Jerusalem, that the walls of spiritual Jerusalem have been brought down. Therefore, I need to go in and run into an army. I need to recruit a group. You know, someone like Nehemiah was in an enemy camp. Mm -hmm. He was serving an enemy. In other words, you can say that he's serving the world. Because he was serving the king of the world. In other words, you can say he's a friend to yeah. the world. But when he got the news of yeah. how the walls of Jerusalem has been destroyed, he cried. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he became sorrowful. And by the Bible said, he fasted and cried, asking God for forgiveness of the sin of Israelites. He was pleading that God should forgive them. Mm -hmm. So why did you become a Christian? Did you become a Christian because you were like, oh, if I join the Lord, if I become a Christian, God will begin to fight my battle? Or did you become a Christian because you've looked into the world and you find out that the world is going into a mess and the walls of spiritual Jerusalem have crumbled? And I know what? It is because we have sinned against the Lord our God. That is why the, the, the walls of spiritual Jerusalem have crumbled. Oh God, forgive me. After God, he pleaded with God. The next thing he started making plans on how to rebuild the world. That was how he recruited an army. And if you look at how they fight the battle, and the way he, uh, Gideon of the old and his army fight the battle, they were drinking water with one hand, holding their armor with one hand. The same thing happened in the life of their man. They were building with one hand, having their armor with one hand. Why? They are ready to build, and they are ready to fight. So they are right. They are not there to eat. They are there to restore a glory that has been lost. So the spiritual army are those that are there to restore a glory that has been lost. And that is why we need to understand, are we in a war? And asking ourselves, are we in a war? Comes to the next question that says, are we in the last day? Because the last day is known with war. If you read the book of uh, Matthew 24, the Bible says in the last day there will be rumors of war, there will be earthquakes, there will be this and that, the love of many will was cold because evil shall was abound. And if you ask ourselves, read that passage of the Bible, compare it with our age. Are those things happening? Yes. For instance, coronavirus is spreading the whole places. Christ is everywhere. Most of us cannot step out of the door. Most of us are locked, in, are locked inside because of the outbreak of a disease. Most of us cannot do our business anymore. Mm -hmm. And upon that, there is a, 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 a natural disaster. That's work is still happening. Even though coronavirus is on edge, people are still going to work. Like in my part of the world in Nigeria, though there is coronavirus, but there is a war in Nigeria. There is a war going on in our country. So those things are happening. And these things are what God prophesied that you hear rumors of war. You hear these earthquake diseases from my pestilence yes. in my in different part of the world. Many people hunger is clean millions every day. This is what God said. So this is to show you that open truth, we have come to the last yeah. day. We have come to the last day. And now yeah. the army will ask himself. Mm. You know, every army has an ammunition. Understand the war yeah. that we are fighting. How do you know this last day army? They understood the war they are fighting. Any army that does not understand the war they are fighting are bound to lose that war. Mm. If you read it's the book of Ephesians 6, he said, let's go to that Ephesians 6. There, God pointed out the war we are fighting. He tried to explain through the, uh, the, uh, our brother Apostle Paul, tried to explain the war we are fighting and the kind of uh, weapons we need in order to win this war. He said, finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. 
Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the whole scheme. He pointed out our enemy. Our enemy is not our fellow human being. Our enemy is devil. And now, what type of war are we fighting? For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when that, so that when, so that when the day of evil comes. You may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm with the belt of truth. Buckle around your waist. Now, the war that protects Christianity in the history of Christianity is truth and righteousness. That has been the war of Christianity. The early apostles conquered because they are standing on the truth. In fact, when someone like Peter and, and, John, and John were captured, they, asked, they told them not to preach, not to preach the truth again. They told them, whose um, word do we believe? Is it that of God or that of man? And you know, God's word is always the truth. So they stand on the truth. And with the truth, they conquered. With the truth, they overcome. Mm. With the truth, they built a shield. Mm. So now, but if you look at the church, you know, in that book of Matthew 24, the disciples we are showing Jesus the temple and how glorious it is. Then Jesus was not telling them, a day is coming when a stone will never be left in this, in, this, in this temple. In other words, a day is coming when there will be a war and the temple will be destroyed. Now, if you look at our church, you find out that Christians are busy building gigantic buildings, building edifices. Building sophisticated buildings, making it so pleasing to the eye. And if you look at it, it looks as if it's not going to fall. But the truth remains that the true walls of Christianity has been crumbled. That is just to show you that we are in the last day. Though we are building edifice, we are building beautiful buildings, gigantic ones, mm. but there is no wall again. The wall, the truth, is no longer there. Yeah. Truth can no longer be found in the church. Yeah. And now, this last day, uh, this last day, uh, last, last day army, they understand that we are in a war. And the walls of Jerusalem has been crumbled. And what is that war that has been crumbled? Truth is no longer there. So they are fighting to restore back the truth. Mm. They are fighting to rebuild the truth. Mm. They are fighting to bring back the righteousness of God into the church. So they understand the war they are fighting. They understand that we are not fighting against, principal, uh, against blood and flesh, but against principalities and power. And what are those principalities and power? Darkness that has been taking over the church. You find out that in the church, occultic men are taking over the church. Do you know, if you meet some of these uh, billionaires that are very occultic, if you are telling them about the church, they will be laughing at you. Do you know why they are laughing at you? Because they know that the same pastor you are telling them to go and meet, are coming to their COVID to collect power. So they know they are the ones ruling that church, you are telling them to go and get salvation. So how can they go there and get salvation for the person they are giving power? It's not possible. So now, this laws they I mean, understand that we are fighting against spiritual powers. Powers ruling in heaven. Powers trying to overtake the kingdom of God on earth. They understand the kind of battle, and they understand the weapon to fight this power. They understand that this power, they operate with darkness, so we are going to use light to fight them. They understand that this power, they operate with light, so we are going to use truth to fight them. They understand that this power operates with evil, so we are going to use righteousness to fight them. And that is why they are building up their armors. They are building up themselves, not a physical weapon, but a spiritual weapon. You find out that this set of people that God has chosen that will fight his last day are coming to God so that they will be equipped. Now, if you go, if, if they go inside the presence of God to pray to God, their cry is not, oh Lord, give me money. Oh Lord, give me time. Their cry is, Lord, build up my faith. Lord, let me have more of your righteousness. Lord, deal with anything that is not of you to me. Remember, in the previous section, we treated about exposing our nature. The Akai is this, Lord, what, was, what are those evil nature that will give the enemy room to overcome me? 
expose it now. Their cry is this, Lord, search me and find out if there is any evil in me. That is their cry. So that, they, so that when they go into the battle, they will end up by saying, they will end up by saying, the pains of the world come in, but they find nothing in me. So these are the people that the Lord has chosen for himself. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. So I get something from what you are saying. That according to what you just um, elaborate on the Gideon army and uh, the army of the, the, the Nehemiah and their group, I get something what you say that these armies of the Lord, as the uh, are that the woman of God is saying, going to God's presence, I just call it a practicing God's presence. So this practicing God's presence are that brought. And what you say is the Gideon group and the Nehemiah group. That now in the Christian way today, the Christianity, people think that Christianity is when people gather people and be doing all this, their wayo and all these uh, uh, 419 of their prophecy and the rest of them. That what God is saying in practicing his presence means, as he said, our last topic, exposing our nature. Why? Because these natures are the time bomb that the enemy have kept in future that if we, if God didn't deal with them right now in this presence, so recruiting the armies of the Lord, equipping the armies of the Lord is the moment of dealing with our natures, dealing with things that are dealing with us, dealing with fornication, smoking, drinking, lying, jealousy, covetousness, or, or disobedience all the manner of, of natures that have been in us, that are hindering us not to enjoy or not to uh, bring down the glory of God in us. So these natures that God is dealing with is the meaning of recruiting his army. So by the time he dealt with those things that are dealing with us, he is now recruited us to be able to carry his weapon. And that weapon is the truth because practicing truth, preaching truth, living on truth is the only way one can come out and say, I am the army of the Lord. Exactly. So now I catch what you're saying that both the Gideon army, both the Nehemiah army, you said the Nehemiah understand that the, the Israelites they have lost the glory. That was why they took them captive. Ne uh, the, uh, 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 Gideon army know that they are going for a war, and this war is not a baby war. They must be fortified to know the secret of their enemy so that they conquer the army. The thousands of them came out for the for the war, but he said, you thousands of armies are not going to go. You people are much. You need to know the tricks. You need to know the way to fight these armies. Let's go for the training. So this training is to give them, the, those combatant soldiers, the weapon. And the, what is that weapon? The weapon is now having the nature of Christ that will bring down the glory of God in them that will fight the battle. For example, David. David was filled with all the physical armor. But when the man, the young guy, wanted to launch out for the war against Saul, as well against move. the Philistine, he could he not. Can't. And what did he say? Please, indeed, I've already gotten God's uh, fortification. The power of God is already in me. Pull off all these physical things. There is something in me. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is in me. Let me go and fight this Philistine, this uncircumcised Philistine. I have God of Israel. He will fight for me. And immediately they pull out all the wanted stuff, all the natures. They want to put pride and self and man's ability. You know what I can do? They put on him. Because then the Israelites are carnal. But they never know that the young boy, David, is spiritual. And immediately they allow him to walk in the spiritual in the name of the Lord God. They, he went for the battle. He overcome the Philistine. So, the, so what I catch what you're saying, that this lost this battle, as I just say, practicing God's presence. And this practicing God's presence is where the training, the recruiting is taking place. That is in that presence of God is what I that talk about, practicing his presence. Now, what you say, Daka, is that what is happening in God's presence at that talk, practicing God's presence. You now say that what is happening in that presence as you come to practice it is a place that God will deal with your nature and God will show you the system of the battle, the system, the way the battle is going to take place. And one of them, as you say, is that he has to deal with our nature. And uh, what that. another thing you say is that they, we must understand that the glory have lost. If Nehemiah does not understand the glory of Israel is gone, he wouldn't have had the body to tell the king, I'm going to go to build the word of Jerusalem. That so is. now understanding that the glory is lost. So everybody that partake in this battle must understand the glory have left the church. As he said, 
pastors and men of God that are deceiving themselves and deceiving the crowd. And the cutting men are going with them, knowing that they're coming to them to receive the power. So now, when you go to tell them about Christ, or cutting men and all these wicked words, they will be laughing at you because they know that those pastors, those dejected pastors, those prophets and rest of them, they receive the power from them. So now they don't call Christianity anything again. That is why all of them can come to God in God's church and feel at home and manipulate him and give him all that what is happening in the church. So the first thing the army of the Lord must know, they must know this point. That is number one point. The glory have left the church. Exactly. And if the lost army, and the only way you can know that the glory have left the church is only when you begin to practice what Ada said, God's presence. Because the more you come to God's presence, you begin to practice every day you go. And the, what you said, Aka, that people are going because of what they want from God, as you said, when you lack, you reconcile with God so that you can get something. But that is not the primary purpose of God calling you. So people are going to God's presence, practicing it because of their need and their want. But this lost armies of the day is not what God is talking about. Nehemiah forsake his conducive, his flamboyant, enjoying life in the life in the in the king in the king's kingdom. He said, "No, I'm done with this kind of life. I'm living. Let me go back because the glory of Israel is gone. Let's go and rebuild it." So, what we are talking about practicing God's presence is that people should live and forsake their need, their want. And now return back to God every day and say, God, what do we do to restore your glory? For the church have lost their glory. And the people that lost the glory is the men at the altar, the workers in the church. They are the ones that lost the glory. And the congregation are now like a sheep without shepherd. They are like a, 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 a fowl without mother that will, that will govern or shelter them. So we must treat on this matter. How do we know that the glory of God have lost in the church? So this is the way of recruiting this army. That the army that must know that the glory have lost. So that they can now go to practice God's presence. Where the scale in their eyes will be removed. And they will now see what lost the glory of God. What do we do to restore the glory? And that is when they will begin to see the way God see. That is when they begin to judge the way God judge. That is when they begin to understand the way God understands. That is when they will now know the mind of God. Because God has his own problem. And people doesn't look into God's pain to know his problem. People are looking onto their own problem. So practicing God's presence is to go and know what is God's problem. And there, the revelational knowledge of God will begin to come on you as you begin to practice his presence. God will begin to show you how he has uh, he lost his church and how the yeah. church has gone into uh, insanity, how the church is dead. And you will not begin to feel bad. You will begin to feel the pain of God. And that is when you enter the Amis movement and you begin to receive your own recruitment. And recruiting you now is when you begin to see the way God sees. You begin to hear the beat of God. You begin to know God's pain and you begin to get ready to solve God's problem. Because God cannot solve his own problem. We will help him. We will solve the problem. And solving the problem is what you just said, that why the early church made it is because they stand on the truth and righteousness. So if we want to help God to solve the problem, we must go back to stand on the truth. We must go back to stand on the righteousness. That is when we can help God to solve his problem. So me will solve God's problem. You will God solve the God's problem. And every one of us that say we're going to be this army of the Lord, the purpose is, Let's go and solve God's problem. Because only when we humanity, whom God have chosen, whom God have breathed his life into us, if we choose to say, God, we're going to be in your Lord's side. So I see that we are going or we are already in the time. When the time of Elijah, let's call a call of separation. Those in the Lord's side, come this way. Let's go and solve God's problem. Those in the bow side, go there and continue with your bow. Mingling is no more accepted. Bringing truth and error, joining together, it doesn't work anymore. So it's a time of separation. And Jesus said it. The time of separating the tithe from the wheat. So this is the time of gaining the grain of the Lord. So I understand what you say. But the last question before we conclude for today. Why is it important to equip the lost army? I come back to you, Ada, before I catch you. 
Why is it important to equip the lost army? Okay, thank you. Why is it, why is it important to equip the lost army? Because the reason is because if, we, if you are not equipped, you cannot fight. If an army is not equipped, he cannot fight. There's no need, there's no need calling him or herself an army. Equipping is to prepare him mm. for the battle ahead. So it is important to equip the army before he go to fight. Because if he is not prepared, prepare, preparation means equipping, equipping the person. So the preparation mm. and the equipping mm. is the same. So when you are not prepared, when you are not equipped, there's no need of going to the field. Because when you are equipped, you can mm -hmm. stand the wise of the enemy. You can understand the strategies of the enemy. When you are equipped, mm -hmm. you are prepared. You can face the enemy. In the spiritual realm, when you are when God equips you, when you are constantly practicing God's presence, there you will be equipped. Mm -hmm. God will equip you for the battle, the spiritual battle, which is not canal. Spiritual battle in terms of uh, against the wives of the enemy. That is the problem of God fighting the error to bring the truth out, to help God to restore the truth. That is when you are being a witness. So it is very important that we that call ourselves Christians must be a witness so that we can stand against this evil day. Because if you are not a witness, you cannot stand mm. the evil days. Because the evil days that we have entered, you will see many things. When somebody sees the truth, you will say that it is error. Mm. error. People will prefer evil than good. Look at, for example, practicing homosexual. homosexual. They take it as something that is good. After mm. all, it is your life. You can do whatever you want. So whenever you choose to do that, you are free. It is wrong. It is an error. Mm. So when you are a thief, when you are prepared for the battle, because remember, it's a spiritual battle, you will know that it's an error. Yes. Raised from the pit of hell. Mm. So you, the army that is prepared, you, the army that has been equipped, will be fighting against it that is mm. not true. It's not the truth. It is a lie from the pit of hell. This is evil. is now the talk of the day. The world is embracing evil Amen. instead of embracing truth. And that's why we need to be a priest. That's why we Christians, whoever that call him or herself a child of God, a disciple, a person that is practicing God's presence, will be a priest, will be prepared to stand against those evil. That will not join the world in practicing the same evil. That is a falsehood to stop this. When we are prepared, you can stop the falsehood and the truth will reign. And again, I say that the battle again, the darkness and the light, when we are equipped, you can be able to stand against the darkness and for light to take over the darkness instead of allowing darkness to overcome the whole world. So that is the important. Amen. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, I catch one of God. Um, um, can you throw more lights on why is it important to equip these lost armies in this end time for the battle? Okay, um, you know, when you were saying something, you said that uh, those, those things that the enemy has placed in us are like a time bomb. They are like a time bomb that we explode. And, uh, you know, this last day, I mean, they are fighting to restore back truth. They are fighting to restore back a righteousness. In the, in the church, in the world, mm -hmm. in, uh, in their families, in every aspect of life they find themselves in. So basically, I've seen so many persons as a pastor, they have not committed, for instance, fornication when they were single. But immediately they mm -hmm. uh, answer the call of God and got married. That is when they find themselves lusting after a lady, committing fornication. So now if you, you, you've got to ask yourself, why now? When I was single, I didn't commit this thing. When I, uh, when, I, when I have not married, I didn't commit this thing. Now I've gotten married. I'm now a pastor. I'm committing this thing. Why the devil activated that at that moment? He does that to be able 
so that he can pollute the church. Many men of God have find themselves in this situation, and they find it difficult coming out because they will know that they will be ashamed of coming out. It's true. So what he does is he keep that thing when they now at the peak of their ministry, the devil do what? Explode it. This is a time. So now we need to be equipped. And when we talk about where the evil and replacing it with good, gives you good. When he takes away fornication, he gives you a love. When he takes away wickedness, so this is how he equips us. And why is he doing this? So that when the prince of the Hallelujah. The network is very bad. Um, the network is very bad. I would say that. No, no. The world comes in me. And when did the prince of the world, Jesus, was at the peak? They came to me. But because they threat, they were calling him different sort of names. We are saying that all they were doing is so that he would become angry, maybe by saying and say, All right, I called them three rounds of angels to come and strike you people out. He would not have fulfilled that ministry. They sat and sat at the time. Pilate asked him, Can't you talk? At least defend yourself. He kept quiet. They were searching at that moment to find something in him, but they couldn't find anything in him. And that was why he ended up by saying, the prince of the world came. They found nothing in me. So it is because he has already been a priest. That was why at that particular moment, at the peak of his ministry, the devil was unable to bring him down. He fulfilled that ministry, and he redeemed mankind. So the same way, we, the last day, uh, the last God, uh, the last last day, um, has to be equipped, has to be, you know, energized. The Lord has to take away whatever that is not of Him. Because, for instance, I understood this thing. When God is calling me for a mission, I had a greatest fear. Do you know my fear? I said, Daddy, there are many things in me that I may not discover, and if I go out in this virtual field, I begin to see it. That was my fear. And I was afraid of all these things. So, but the Lord now told me something. Being afraid is not the problem. Do you know what? Allow me to encounter you this now. If he begins to encounter me now, that is when, that is, uh, he, will, he will be able to show me myself. The Lord called me into a position now. But he was now telling me, the, the interpreting to me the dream he gives me so many years. He now told me, some of the promises I made to you, why I have not fulfilled it is because you have not tested you, I have not examined you. I want to examine you now to know what and what I'm going to take away from you because when I want you out, the enemy will come and search to know if he can find something. And if he finds something, he will destroy you. So you know what? Allow me to encounter you now. Allow me to search you now. Allow me to try you now. I know if there is any. That was why David, understanding this thing, said, The Lord, try me. Search me and find out if there is any wicked way in me. Because the enemy might see some faults. Remember, some of our faults, some of the things we see ourselves exhibiting, it's not our problem. It's not our fault. We are not, we are, we are innocent of it. We don't know when we inherited it. It is the enemy that planted it and hide it somewhere that we cannot easily discover it. And why did he do so? He made it so, so that at the dying minute, when we are about to be launched, he will explode it. It's like a time bomb. It's like when you are in a physical world, the enemy has gone ahead of you and planted bombs in strategic area. So when you come out to fight him, he will blast it. You will lose your soldiers. That is what he does to Christians. You see many men of God, they did not fall when they were beginning. They fell when they were at the peak because this is a time bomb. That is why you need to go into the presence of God now for him to search you, for him to equip you. So this is why we need to be. So this is why it is very, very important to go into his presence. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Today is great. Thank God for 
the topic honestly we still have one or two more um platform to treat on this topic is not something we can just end like that because as we are going through it, I'm seeing more questions and more things to deal with, which I will tell you guys to study on that till next week. Uh, but in conclusion, I want to bring it to the end by adding a little concerning what you just said from the question. Why is it important to equip the armies of the Lord for the battle? And the little I want to add, the reason why it's good to equip them is that they might know the direction of the battle, that they might know the way of the battle. If you are not equipped, you won't know the direction of the battle. You will just come out as an army, like uh, some armies, they will just come out like African armies. I was discussing with one of my daughter this, uh, this couple minutes ago. He was telling me how the armies are shooting and killing Ugandans and they are dying because the leaders, they don't value their people anymore. The same way they are doing in Nigeria, the armies are killing the people that are leading. So if you don't know the way or the meaning or the what you are called to do as a soldier, you will shoot your, 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 the right people as the African leaders are shooting the right people. So in the armies of this law, what I want to add, why is it good to equip that we might not shoot our, the right people, but we, go, we should shoot, shoot the enemy. That is why there is need to this import. That is, there is, a, there is good for um, to equipping the lost army. And if I bring it home, you'll find out that one of the things they do, which we are going to treat it next week, the way the church are killing the people that God give him, give, put in their hands. Out of anger, out of unforgiveness, you will see pastors cursing their members. You see ministers, prophets, raping, killing. Can you imagine how a man of God will pregnant his daughter, or sorry, his member, because he don't want him to be known, he will go and abort the child. Apart from that, you see how some churches, you see ministers, the kind of prayer topic they, they raise for people to pray. Most times I saw the, 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 the fist, them with the physical um, practice, the, some will bring cake. So we bring knife. I saw one video. You see the members, they were with knife. And there's some were with cane, long cane. And uh, I think there's another one I can't remember. So they are bringing all those things to kill their enemies. And who are they coming to be their enemies? Their friends, their mothers, their fathers, their neighbors, their sisters, their brothers, their leaders. And the people, their communities and the society. Paraventure, maybe one of them may be under attack of the witchcraft. Maybe they have prophesied to the person that the person for witchcrafting you is your friends or your mother-in-law, your father-in-law. You see them, they carry the knife to kill. And after so many days, you see people died. And those people that died in their hands, you see them coming to testify. Pastor, after we use that knife to cut the head and the neck, of the witchcraft and the wicked that is attacking me. I tell you, two people have died in my family. This is not the kind of a recruiting God is talking about. God yeah. wants to recruit his people and give them the sword that they may know the direction, the enemy that God is targeting to destroy. And that is why the Bible says we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness. So these are the, the one I want to add in what you people have said, that a, recruiting the armies of the Lord, that they might know the direction where the Lord want them to go and use the weapon to shoot. Because today we are, the church is using the weapon that God gives to them against the enemy, against human beings. And that is another abomination. That is one of the errors. That is one of the falsehood. That is one of make God unhappy in this end time because the church have lost the focus. The Christians have lost the focus out of what they're going through, out of persecution, out of the trial, out of the tribulation. They are lost the, the, the focus of who we must fight and who we must destroy. So now it has become a carnal battle, man to man, friend to friend, family to family, parents to children, children to parents, never to mothers. That is not what it's supposed to be. So this is what I want to add in this topic today. And the, honestly, I pick, as I said, I pick some topic we're going to treat next week. 
One of them is how do we understand the battle we are in? Can you write it down so that you will not forget it? How do we understand the battle we are in? Number two, what do we do in this battle? What do we do? What are we supposed to be do? And the number three, what are those equipment that we're supposed to be equipped? So these are the things we are going to deal next week. And also, what are those time bombs? So by the time we bring it, because we want to bring this in, in a nursery level where people will understand. So now whoever watched this program, he will understand what he means that this is school. Fellow my brethren, I want to tell you that this thing we are saying, all these points and all these questions we are asking and we are answering is a key for you to enroll yourself into this school. It's all about the school. This is what God is doing in our life, and we are enjoying it. God is equipping us. God is teaching us the way of the kingdom. God is revealing himself to us. We are knowing now what Jesus wants. No wonder Jesus says, the greatest commandment is the love of your enemy. The greatest commandment is to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love thy God with all your heart, with all your mind. How will you love God? You only love God when you love humanity. You only love God when you help human beings. You only love God when you keep your neighbor, your enemy alive. No wonder Jesus said, when your enemy asks you for a cup of water, he said, give him that cup of water. As he collect the cup of water and drink it, you are putting a hedge of fire on his head. You are putting judgment on him. So these are the criteria that we need to know concerning the battle of the end time. No wonder the church lost the glory. Remember, the topic says, equipping the lost days army on this end time, the battle between truth and error. This is what we have for today. I really want you to enter into this school. I really want you to join this school, that as you join this school, the Lord God, as my sister said, practicing God's presence, Bible said that no one that come to God's presence and remain the same. Do not go to the present because you need yam, because you need uh, uh, cocoa yam, because you need meat, because you need husband, you need wife, you need children. No, you go to the present because you want to be recruited as the armies of the last time. You want to know God. You want to know the direction God is going. You want to be the people that will stand for him. You want to make him happy. You want to change and bring down the glory of God back to the church. The things that trouble God are supposed to trouble you. The thing that give God restless mind is what's supposed to give you restless mind. The thing that brought tears into the eyes of Jesus is what's supposed to brought tears into your eyes. This is when you know that you have enrolled into the school and you focus on the training because the battle is already on. Thank you for joining this program. Father, we give you glory because I know you have released your word. You have spoken your mind to your children. Father, I ask thee, O oh Lord, bring a platform. Bring people, O oh God, that will roll into this school. And as many that are going into the school, Lord, continue to encourage them. Those that are going through one encounter or the other, give them understanding that they are going through the training, that the training is always that way. Because there's no way an army will go through training without going to the field and this some practice. Father, Holy Ghost is all about practice, practicalizing the training. It's all about showing us what you want, what you don't want. It's all about movement. It's all about an encounter. It's all about going through one thing or the other. It's all about understanding your word and what you want, as David. David says, I don't understand you, God, anymore. Your way is quite different from my way. Lord, please search me. I think there are some wicked way in me. Watch me. Judge my anxieties. I want to be like you. Why did he say, why did he pray that prayer? Because he wants to be like you. For the Holy Ghost School is all about, we want to be like you. Come and judge us. Continue to judge us. Continue to expose our weaknesses. Continue to show us your mercy so that we can eventually turn around to be the way you want us to be. Thank you for this program for today. Thank you for starting all the uh, technical issues. We give you praise and thanksgiving. Father, as we continue in this program, continue with us. Prepare our also, God. Prepare the people that will hear and will watch after next week's program again. We give you glory. Blessed be thy name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Once more, um, if you want to reach us, you can reach me in 647-533-6702. And um, I want to, uh, Ada, can you tell them your contact so that if anybody wants to uh, reach you, they can reach you, please. 080 Akachuku, can you tell us your number, please? Okay, for well, uh, my number is plus two three four eight two eight zero six one six seven seven three and nine seven. I repeat plus two three four eight two eight zero six one six seven seven three and nine seven. I repeat plus two three four eight two eight zero six one six seven seven three and nine seven.
plus uh, two three four uh, eight zero six one six seven seven three nine seven. And also you can um, uh, uh, email us on Holy Ghost School uh, one at gmail dot com, or you can go to uh, online discipleship uh, 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 um, Holy Ghost School online dot com or end time discipleship dot com. That is where you can get our website and you can reach us from there. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, um, as the network is all saying it well, uh, our email is uh, um, holyghostschool1 at gmail.com. And also, you can go to uh, www.entidiscipleship.com. You can know better on this Holy Ghost School. There are free books there you can download and you can understand more of the Holy Ghost School. Thank you for joining this program. God bless you. I wish you a um, good day. Bye.